Hi there, welcome to Sound Paint. My name is Trolls. This is all about our 1985 passionate C5 grand piano. If you already own this library, this update contains new subdirectories. Everything is neatly organized into mains, ambients, arps, and sound labs. This library is comprised of 18 different deep sample parts of the Yamaha C5 grand piano. Now, when we talk about grand pianos, it's sort of a fleeing term. There's what we call super grands, which is what we're gonna look at today. But there's also traditional grand pianos, and then there's baby grands, and then it sort of goes down the ladder. The C5, probably the most common studio piano when it comes to these grand pianos, is found in countless studios, countless recordings, Elton John, Prince, you name it. It's really one of the most used studio pianos. And what's so magical about it is that the sound is big. Think pop and rock, which is clearly what it's designed for or sort of studio classical and certainly cinematic as well. Now, we deep sample this sweet baby. There's over 17,000 real-time samples in the library. Real-time samples just mean that when you play the keys, you get up to 127 different velocity layers. In other words, it's just a much more playable instrument that way. But we didn't just record it in traditional fashion. If we look here at the parts, we also recorded it in a corda, which means a more felt, softer sort of variation of the library. And you'll also notice that we've got two different microphone positions. We have the player and the close microphone. Close meaning that we're putting Neumann U87 microphones all the way down to the strings to get the most intimate close sound, if you will. So this is almost like putting your ear to the strings. Then we also have a player perspective, also recorded with Neumann's UM57 microphones giving you a more realistic perspective from the player. Now, we clearly got a lot to talk about, but instead of me talking too much here, I would much rather talk to you through the keys. You may notice that I'm moving the mod wheel here. When I do that, we do a lot of stuff to the EQ bandwidth here. So we have 127 dynamic layers on every single key, but I'm also moving the EQ to sculpt the dynamics. So it's like I have many different pianos inside of one. From very soft down here. And if I move it up here and start playing a little more dynamically. It's not because I'm gonna use the mod wheel all the time, but it allows me to sort of dial in the color I'm looking for. And speaking of that, on this particular patch here, we'll notice that color is set to minus four, meaning that it's actually a darker variation of the piano. Let me try to set up the zero here to compare. It's a little bit brighter, minus four.
it's so dynamic. You can do so many things with this expansive range of dynamics. It feels emotional playing these plastic keys for me, and I think that's a tall order for a virtual instrument. I'm touching something here. I can express myself dynamically. It's just rewarding to play. Now, let me just show you two different sides to this piano. It's great for pop and rock. If I take this patch here, it's gonna be very hard punchy no matter what I do. One of the reasons is that we have a feature called Velocity Zoom inside of Sound Paint here. We'll notice that the value is 60 to 127, meaning that every velocity layer under 60 doesn't exist, which means that we're in the sort of more bright, harder part of the velocities here. Great for like pop and rock. It's just very bright, very sharp. I love Nils Fram. This is a sonic love letter to him. Just super, super intimate piano using our una corda articulations inside of the C5 here. So this is very felt, very muffled, but also very much the sound of right now. So many little like mechanical noises. If I isolate them in a quarter here and we just listen to the mechanical noises, it's like. Some of these mechanical noises are coming from our key attack, our key noises, and our key releases inside of the library. You may know in Sound Paint that we have our attack and our release categories here as well. These are unique sound categories where we can superimpose those small mechanical noises of instruments on top of existing instruments or other instruments as well.
And if I want an even more intimate sound, I just take the mod wheel down here on sensitive souls. Now, because we're in sound paint, we can also morph different articulations together. We can also morph microphones together. So in this case here, we're taking the close and the player mic and putting them on the mod wheel here. So it's kind of like, imagine your assistant like running back and forth with the microphone between them to sort of do that fluently, like a crazy composer saying like, hey, I want a piano, but I want the microphones to move as I'm playing. That's essentially what we're doing here. It's a very organic sound and we can just hear subtle changes in the timbre as we're morphing between the two mics. It gets slightly more distant. Remember when we talked about the microphones, how the close ones were all the way down to the strings and how the player is in your normal ear position? We're moving the microphones between those two, so it's super close and intimate here. And as I move the mic down, we so ever so softly move from the soundboard up to my ears in terms of microphones. It's very subtle, but if I move it very fast here, we can hear there are differences in it. In this program here where I'm taking the main articulation like the normal piano here and then I'm combining it with another part where we only recorded the resonance of the strings. Combined it gives sort of a plucked C5 kind of vibe. case here of the C5, this is from 1985 and the strings were also from 1985. So it has that very sort of 80s sound, if you will. But when we use these sort of resonating articulations here, we're bringing forth different characters. I just say that because I could hear the vintage soul inside of the piano, even if I remove the main mic here and we're just listening to the resonance. When I hear a pluck sound here, I immediately just think about going to the arpeggiator. We have a beautiful analog model ladder filter here. This would be the same filter as we find in the Moog Model D, the Stradivarius of synthesizers. just immediately gets that sort of filmic quality to it. Then for me, I immediately think like, hmm, maybe I should throw in like a Juno plug on that as well, because this just sounds so Juno-like in terms of appreciations. Maybe this guy here. Let's try to add the piano here as well. See what um, blooms out of this one.
almost feel this one here would benefit from velocity zoom. Let me just take it super down to just like, let's say 60. So now I'm only triggering the first 60 velocity layers. I'm gonna take a compressor and really beef it up. Maybe we have two compressors light top on top, just cause it's so sweet in those softer velocities. That ARB whole function really comes neat at times. For me, it's so liberating and non-stressful. I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes feel stressful on the keys, like, oh, it will come out. Just lean back and enjoy with the ARB. Does have a little bit of like a koto like quality to it. Wow, 
One of my favorite all-purpose pianos. It works in rock, pop, it works in jazz, local sounding orchestras, smaller venues, and it certainly works for cinematic stuff as well. And as you can see here, there's so much we can do just with a single piano. It's almost infinite how many different programs and directions we can pursue. Nothing always works for everything. And that goes for brands, that goes for instruments, it goes for anything in the world. Sometimes we just have to explore new colors and sometimes as well, like we need to invent our own colors. And maybe that's what sound paint is all about. Thank you for watching.